Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, thumbs up, thumbs down. Or you can share or you can like. And today I wanted to talk about the changes that Boris has put in place for us folks in the UK uh, for 2020. Some of you may know some of them, some of you may not. So I'm running them by you. It's not going to be a long video. But it's basically um, increases, decreases and a pretty £20 note. That's why I've called it the good and the bad and the ugly with, well, the good, the bad and the pretty with regard to financial changes. So what have we got to start off with? We've got a 2.7% 2, 2 increase in rail fares. That's the bad. Um, people are having to upgrade their cars. We've already had that because, you know, what with the... Um, you know, the ULEZ, the ultra low emission zone, it's forcing people to buy newer cars. At least if they're petrol, they have to be um, above 59, I think. And with um, diesel, I can't remember what it is. Yeah, diesel, you have to be new. Anyway, as long as it's Euro 5 and above emission, that's all you need to know. So not only for those people who can't afford to buy a new car, even though if you're on um, Social Security or if you're getting universal credit, they're supposed to give you an allowance towards a newer car. I don't know how that's going to work. So what's going to happen is people are going to have to take public transport, aren't they? And what they're saying is the fares are going up and the train um, fares are going up. And, you know, it's already expensive. They reckon that the um, UK is one of the most expensive with regard to train fares and or rail fares. And admittedly, if you buy them 12 weeks in advance, you can save a hell of a lot of money. But not all of us are able to do that. Some of us need to, you only find out maybe a week or so in advance that you need to go somewhere. So unless you're planning to go, you know, maybe to Birmingham or Manchester, depending on where you live, or to London, if you're up that side, you're not going to know in advance unless it's something is planned. If you plan well enough in advance, it's not going to be that expensive. But, OK, the UK has the most expensive train fares in Europe. If t tickets are bought on the day, they could be a little bit cheaper if you buy them after 10.30 a.m. Uh, the cheapest, um, if bought a month in advance, e.g. according to BBC Reality Check, um, you can make some saving. But really, apparently they put the um, advance tickets up 12 weeks in advance. So the further you are away from the 12 weeks, the less of a bargain you're going to get. So say, for example, London to Sheffield. You pay for that on the on in advance, 12 weeks in advance, it's £22. If you go to, from London to Sheffield on the day, it's £79. That's a significant difference. OK, London to Edinburgh, 12, month, 12 weeks in advance, it's only £19. If you buy it on the day, 105 So it is about planning if you can. Season tickets, you get 25% off of the normal price. But there again... I um, put a search in Bedford to London Blackfriars. That's £124.30 a week. And that's going up in February. Bedford to Blackfriars for the year, if you get a, an annual season ticket, £4,972. Apparently, there's this website called goeuro.co.uk, which compares the price of journeys across bus, rail, plane. And also, if you're used to your own car, if you use your own car, the tool also gives an indication at the time needed. So if that is a factor, this tool is excellent for Paris to Tours. Train planning tool, loco2.com. It's worth looking into, especially if you have to travel by train. It is so expensive. OK, what else is new? We've got the new £20 note, which that is the pretty um, plastic like the tenor and the fiver. Um, that's going to be launched, I think, in April 2020, if I remember rightly. Um, for those 25 and above, there's a 6.8% increase in the minimum wage, um, rising to £8.67. 
that is meant to be four times inflation and it's the equivalent of 50p an hour which is pretty good 50p an hour that's what to do 10 hours so five huh? extra five for a day so yeah it's significant five a day and you know for five days it's 25 pound a week that's quite a good um increase but employers are struggling are they going to want to pay that increase can they afford to pay that increase are they going to reduce their recruitment are they going to start impl implementing zero contract hours to get out of it and so you don't have the security of like um a steady income you get eight pounds 67 an hour but then if it's just for a couple of hours or three or four hours a day what is the point so it's like they give with one hand and take with another. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but, you know, these employers, they're struggling as well. So national insurance threshold has been increased to 9,500. At the moment, it's 8,632. And then there's a rise in state pension by 3.9% for you little old folk, seasoned folk, mature folk, retirees. Um, yeah, rise in state pension by 3.9%, which is equivalent to about £5 a week. Better than a kick in the teeth, eh? And um, that will allow pensions to pay the increase to the council tax, which is going to be increased in February 2020 by 2%. So if you're on a pension, um, that increase in your pension would go towards your council tax and you still get 1.9% extra, which is not bad, but for those of, those of you who are not on a pension, hopefully your um, inflation in your salary will reflect it and you know it won't be too much of a problem. Increase in the state pension age, well, we all know that. As of September 2020, it's increasing to 66 years. Uh, broadband companies must give notice in writing of expiry of broadband. And then it's also offer better deals. And that's it. I wonder if you knew any of that or all of it or you're saying, oh, what's she blabbing on about? Anyway, I hope some of you found it useful. Bye bye.